Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar organized under the aegis of Center for Business Markets of the Indian School of Business. Uh, my name is Kumar Guru. I want to give uh, from the Indian School of Business. I want to give you a little bit of a context and background to uh, what has led us to this webinar uh, this evening. Uh, ever since the lockdown, uh, one of the things that all of us were, you know, concerned about is how do we get things back to normal, uh, and that led us at ISB to come up with a unique idea called the Jumpstart India at ISB initiative, where the effort was to engage students under the able supervision of our faculty to help solve some problems that we are all facing thanks to the pandemic but more importantly to support our governments whether it is in our you know both the states that we are in or in other states to help solve and you know some of the problems and also help with the economic revival when we started discussing this activity uh, this um, uh, you know project with uh, dr janardhan reddy garu uh, secretary uh, apc government of uh, secretary and apc government of telangana he came up with a couple of ideas uh, one of which was this very unique idea about branding and marketing strategy for telangana sona rice uh, so one led to another uh, one conversation led to another conversation and then we had uh, uh, you know we had a group of faculty Uh, who's got interested in this and students who engaged uh, who are engaged through this and that has led us uh, to a very nice project uh, on studying the benefits of telangana sona and more importantly how do you apply some of the classical marketing strategies uh, to some of these government initiatives and what are the lessons uh, th that lie therein uh, this has been a project that is going on for the past 4 5 months Uh, and while we spoke with the government of telangana uh, much of the you know partnership and collaboration then went to professor pravin rao uh, under his leadership at the uh, telangana state agriculture university uh, and he is here with us as well this evening and this is what has led us to uh, today's uh, evening gathering i want to sort of uh, thank all our faculty colleagues uh, for their leadership and more importantly i want to uh, thank professor dbr seshadri director of the center for business markets uh, and this is a project that has been anchored at the center for business markets uh, professor dbr as we fondly call him uh, is going to steer the conversation this evening uh, and take it over from here dbr over to you please thank you guru and uh, friends who are on this uh, panel discussion a warm welcome I particularly like to heartily welcome Professor Pravin Rao Garu and also Ravi Kant Reddy Garu. Uh, uh, the way that we'd like to do this is initially start off with uh, Professor Pravin Rao, who will give his views on how this whole project, you know, from an idea stage became a reality, finally encompassing several lakhs of hectares of land in Telangana. and how a uh, idea that was conceived in the laboratory at the uh, professor jay shankar telangana state agricultural university has become a mass movement among the farmers so we'd like to understand the challenges that he went through uh, whenever dr janardhan reddy joins he is uh, preoccupied with uh, the chief secretary in a meeting but he said he would join very soon then we will uh, like to loop him in to think about uh, to discuss about how the government what is the government thinking in this whole uh, launch of telangana sona and then we will have ravikant reddy garu to basically talk about the consumer perspective and finally we will loop in the chief architect of the project report that involved uh, three uh, entities isb the uh, telangana agricultural university and the government of telangana agricultural department so together they came up with of course peer headed by madhu on the market uh, approach and how the whole uh, research study was orchestrated i think uh, dr janardhan reddy has joined if i am right sir uh, hearty welcome to you are you able to hear us yes 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 i am able to i joined and i am able to hear but i am on mobile as usual always Okay, so if you don't mind, uh, I'll just rewind a bit and then uh, request uh, that we basically get started with you in terms of uh, how we can. Uh, what was the government's thinking? So, for the benefit of all the participants, I'd like to formally introduce each speaker when their turn comes to speak, 
and the way we'll do it is now we'll request Dr. Janardhan Reddy to uh, provide the opening remarks and then move to Praveen Rao Garu and then Ravikant Reddy and then Madhu Vishwanathan. And finally, I'll request Manish to talk about it from a research perspective. What can management research do to alleviate human suffering of various kinds uh, in a much broad brush angle, a big data, AI, machine learning and so on. Uh, I'd like to formally introduce, uh, and after that, we'll throw open the forum to Q&A, so anybody who has can post their questions on the Q&A, not on the chat box, please. Uh, formal introduction of Dr. Janardhan Reddy is uh, of IAS, Indian Administrative Service. He's also currently the Agriculture Produce Commissioner, APC, and Secretary to the Government Department of Agriculture, Telangana. He's a proud alumnus of... Uh, it's the same university which currently Praveen Raugaru is the vice chancellor. He has many accolades in his uh, up his sleeve. One is the Prime Minister's Award for Excellence in Pub Public Administration. These are all at the national level. He has been featured. President of India Award for Best Community Mobilization and Poverty Reduction in Urban Areas. These are burning problems, as you can see. He was also filmed by Amir Khan in his show Satyameva Jayate for his efforts on solid, uh, urban solid waste management. He has varied experiences, obviously a senior IS officer of his stature would have been through many, many uh, assignments covering uh, rural, urban, women, human development, housing, poverty alleviation. So I would say in a nutshell, he's an expert on development. He's adept at using IT tools and technology advancements for better dissemination of information and for objective decision making, very important in today's uh, data driven world. But I think his heart lies in ensuring that there is emphasis on human interventions with practical approaches. So not pie in the sky ideation, but anything that is uh, thought of should finally find a practical application. So with this brief introduction, I would request uh, Janardhan Rindigaru to please talk about what was the driving force within the government of Telangana? Obviously, it has been anchored at the chief minister's level and you have been ably, able to vision it and take it forward into implementation. But why did the Telangana government even decide to say that we need a new variety of rice? And obviously, a lot of deep thinking would have happened in the government circles at the highest level. So if you can throw light on that and how the mandate was handed over to the Telangana State Agricultural University to come up with something interesting. Or it may be that it was a symbiotic relationship that they came up with an idea and you said, wow, this is great. And how do we scale it up? Because the government brings scale and influence like nobody else can. So with this uh, small preamble, I request you to please reflect on the entire journey from a government perspective on the uh, uh, Telangana Sona. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sheshadrigaru, for the nice introduction and brief introduction about me. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, Telangana State, uh, am I visible and audible? Very much, sir. Okay. Very audible. Telangana, Telangana, states in, uh, Telangana State in last uh, five, six years moved from a state of scarcity to a state of surplus. In fact, uh, present uh, problem, if you call it as a problem, problem of plenty. And uh, our Honorable Chief Minister says, don't call it as a problem. So now we have shifted from problem to issues. So present, present issue is, so Telangana state uh, is uh, suffering or benefiting from the surpluses. So for example, if you take uh, paddy, uh, from 35 lakh acres uh, cultivated area in 2014-15, uh, both these seasons put together, we have moved almost to more than a crore. So 100 lakhs, 103 crore. Because this particular rainy season, uh, we had uh, cultivated a crop of uh, paddy in 54 lakh acres. And another 50 lakh acres is uh, proposed for rabi, or asingi we call it as. So more than 100 lakh acres. So the, that in terms of numbers is a very huge. And we produce around uh, uh, 2 crore tons. Uh, very, very, what is a conservative estimates, 2 crore tons of rice. 20 million tons of rice, but we consume uh, around, uh, uh, if you say only rice, it is around 58 lakh or so for the entire state. And in terms of paddy, we consume around 75, 80 lakh. 
so there is a surplus of 1 crore 20 lakh uh, paddy and uh, similarly 80 85 lakh of uh, rice uh, in terms of rice then uh, the, so presently it's a good that we are producing more mm-hmm. so whether we can consume or uh, other states can consume or the world can consume that is one particular uh, uh, point and what value addition is required what varieties are required what are we consuming what are the preferences growing preferences are changing preferences because of the changing lifestyles or life disorders of the people etc so in that context uh, if you purely see all varieties put together in india for example whatever basmati rice has been produced uh, in uh, say punjab and that area where they have got the geographical indicator so around 25000 crores of foreign exchange is in and around 5 million tons of rice is exported so um, and another 5 to 7 million tons of non basmati rice also is exported overall 10 to 12 million of uh, million tons of rice but telangana itself uh, as a surplus of uh, more than 12 million tons of uh, uh, tons of rice so it is equivalent or more than what is the export uh, what is the quantity exported from our country to various countries uh, in the world so that is number one and uh, then number two so we are also a little bit of surplus uh, in maize and in terms of uh, cotton and uh, in terms of uh, some of the vegetables and fruits for example uh, mango we produce more than what we eat citrus fruits we produce more than what we eat and tomatoes only seasonal problems are there but overall our surplus is more than 5 million tons so like that and many of the major crops and vegetables and fruits either we are self sufficient or we are just uh, brimming uh, and uh, over and then uh, we are little surplus so when we particularly come uh, to this telangana sona uh, professor uh, pravin rao and uh, his team need to be congratulated out of continuous uh, very serious research work that the university has done they have come out with a very good uh, variety and uh, then that variety obviously so we wanted to have this type of discussion and launch this program around 14th november which happens to be a diabetic day world diabetic day very unfortunate but diabetes is there so they mind uh, one side and the other side india and many of the asiatic countries out of uh, 10 crore uh, what do you say uh, uh, tons of rice that is consumed all over the world majority of the people um, from asia region and all that they consume uh, rice and uh, rice consumption uh, may undergo a little bit of change initially from 1950 60 70s so the proportion of rice vis-a-vis the millets etc uh, if you see rice uh, was less millets etc were more and then now slowly it has picked up from 80s and 90s the rice eating habit of uh, this this state and neighboring states and in, the, in asia also by and large is very very high so within the rice variety in any case in any case we are eating say suppose consuming around uh, 80 lakh tons to 1 uh, 10 100 lakh tons of uh, paddy or uh, around 58 60 lakh tons of rice in telangana itself <laughs> so then uh, hyderabad is sometimes they call it as diabetic uh, uh, capital and uh, asia also in india most of us uh, are diabetic so that is the reason why anyhow if you can i have to eat the rice you uh, eat, uh, eat such rice uh, which has uh, less glycemic index so with that i think motive uh, uh, at the back uh, and a couple of coupled with this there are many other advantages to the farmer like this is resistant and uh, then short duration and uh, then yield point of you also go down and also is good that is one point and second point is for come from consumer point of view so diabetics uh, uh, it is it is less dangerous so for, for example if anyhow if you can't take rice you should not take rice but anyhow if many of them are taking rice if they take rice which has less glycemic index it is beneficial so that's how the university has come up uh, with this uh, particular variety and in fact uh, uh, last year telangana many of its among uh, many of its past so it has launched uh, a very desirable required and popular 
regulated form during last uh, kharif or ramadan kalam season the it go to the farmer level village level is the farmers to grow the crops uh, which can be exported to meet the nutritional requirements not only the food requirements of the state and country also to the to meet the nutritional requirements of the state and country and the world so otherwise we have very good soil very good weather very good university very good um, scientists and very good vice chancellor everything is good but uh, then we whatever we are producing so we'll also uh, should add income uh, to the farmer so in terms of yield and all that we are doing good but it should also enhance the income of the farmers so slowly if we produce and if it is surplus so some t- after some time uh, the weight of surplus will uh, crush you to the death so we do not want to face the disaster uh, around 1920s no 1920 yeah 100 years back first time in us uh, during first world war period they faced the surplus situation of some of the crops and but at that point of time there were famines the whole world was starving and they were able to sell or they were able to dump or they were able to export so whatever surplus was there with them so now today some of the major crops like uh, paddy and like maize and like wheat like cotton by and large year after year surpluses are growing the ending stocks are growing so we need to know now the, um, the preference of the consumers and the world what do they want to exactly eat that is number one so it is not enough that if you just produce if you don't do marketing so then um, it's no use god makes man tailor makes gentleman so unless a tailor is there or a makeup man is there unless it is marketed well in fact let me speak truth uh, uh, i became secretary agriculture and apc agriculture in the month of february and i never knew that there is one brand called uh, telangana sona which is good so in the month of march itself i spoke to professor uh, pravin rao garu uh, the vice chancellor and when i heard that uh, when he showed to me also the telangana variety very proudly i immediately uh, got from a farmer from devarkonda or so with the good offices of, of the university so many of the people in hyderabad also when i talk in private circles they say where is this telangana sona it has not been popularized it is very good effective <laughs> useful but uh, it has not the <laughs> got the not got the imagination of the consumer never so because it is a of course so government uh, has done its duty the university has done its duty the, but we have probably not made as much advertisement about uh, about the merits of this particular variety uh, as private people would have done uh, so that's the reason why when i had any first interaction with the isb so i uh, then uh, when uh, they showed inclination uh, to help uh, in certain ways then immediately i said so this is the immediate thing and easiest thing and immediately should be done for two two reasons one we have been growing this particular variety for last four five years or so and uh, it is so good and it has been published in the american journal of food and nutrition that is the glycemic index value is around 0.53 uh, where visavi around uh, glycemic value of around 70 for the similar uh, uh, fine varieties of rice so but it has not got uh, the imagination of the whatever there's not reached to the last mile where the consumers uh, want to eat actually so that is the reason why i requested asb whether we can take it up so the series of meetings zoom meetings in the corona were conducted and asb and with their uh, effective team in fact with the help of uh, their uh, research team and also the students and they have come up uh, uh, with a very good uh, project report like uh, how we should uh, take it to the forward to the uh, last mile in the market so particularly regarding uh, uh, this particular variety i think that's it and when the panelists speak and i can add something and when pravin rao says the uh, distinct advantages of this particular variety and uh, many of the our agriculture uh, district agriculture officers and many people i think from the civil society uh, I, i don't know uh, sridhar would have uh, uh, given this access to many of the uh, what do you say people who are involved in the commerce or trading 
so thank you for providing me the opportunity to bat first and i will be intervening as and when required or take questions thank, thank you, you dr janardhan reddy and now i would like to invite dr pravin rao uh, to actually tell us the story of telangana sona where it all started in uh, terms of an ideation what was the perceived need and so on uh, because uh, and also in general talk about how new varieties of rice are uh, ideated and brought to fruition but a word of introduction about him he is like dr janardhan reddy having stellar accomplishments uh, he is the first vice chancellor of the professor jay shankar telangana state agricultural university since april 2016 currently he is serving his second term he is a prominent contributor to micro irrigation scenario in india he conceived formulated and implemented the world's largest micro irrigation project for small holder farmers covering over 1 million hectares he has over 160 research papers in peer reviewed national and international journals uh, several field irrigation practical manuals books crop growing manuals project documents and dvd films he has authored invited to international and national forums for presentation of his uh, work covering different aspects of micro irrigation and fertigation management he also loves mentoring budding agronomists as a favorite pastime he has many awards uh, the 7th ms swaminathan award as we all know ms swaminathan was a doyen of agriculture in india leader with strategic vision bestowed by uh, agri business summit and agri awards 2019 he also got the award as the best vice chancellor uh, for the year 2018 and then a lifetime achievement award in 2018 education leadership award 2018 fellow of chai lifetime achievement award 2015 he was also given an award by israel for i presume his work on micro irrigation and a leadership award for promotion of micro irrigation in india africa and southeast asia with these words of introduction i'd like to request dr pravin rao to reflect on the whole journey of telangana sona from idea where where did it start was it a requirement from the farmer was it something that in your labs you found that this is an exciting variety and how you actually made it a mainstream crop over to you sir thank you sheshadri garu for your kind words and uh, uh, i think we uh, you have spoken uh, much of uh, uh, what uh, i have done now but anyway uh, i will come back to this journey sir actually when uh, in actual 2014 the state of telangana was bifurcated and the new agricultural university was formed uh it was on september 3rd 2014 i uh, remember that uh, i started working on this uh, these aspects uh first of all what we did is that uh, what exactly our farmers need in this state so we started looking at that whether the present uh, crop improvement programs the natural reserves management programs when i say crop improvement in terms of high yielding varieties high breeds uh, similarly uh, natural resource management means uh, uh, mechanization water management uh, say all other aspects so whether whatever we have today are appropriate for telangana because it is a new state you have new aspirations new ambitions and so on and so forth so we thought that let us take a stock of the situation and uh, then we zeroed down upon what are the important crops of our state then we started looking at each crop then we found that interestingly uh, though i was in this university for a long time honestly with all humility let me say i was so immersed in water management that i did not have uh, say what call all these things uh, being looked at and also being abroad for a uh, long period of time so then at that point of time the ruling variety was bp2524 which is what we call it as samba masuri which was a very popular variety released 25 years back but of 155 days duration which doesn't match our agro ecological conditions it is it is a mismatch basically 
so it actually eats away into two seasons of the uh, say what we call our year so we said that we this state needs a variety which is of four months duration similar to tella hamsa earlier tella hamsa was a ruling variety which is of 120 to 125 days duration so we said that we need a 125 days duration variety so we started i sat with our uh, rice uh, scientist and they said that this is our target we should breed varieties which are of 125 days duration so that they can fit in into the our um, uh, rainfall cycle our weather conditions and so that cropping intensity can be increased that we can grow two to three crops in a year that was the main agenda for us that is how we started pushing uh, the variety uh, the varieties which are of uh, say early duration that is 125 days so the initial three varieties what we released there were two coarse varieties and this was one super fine variety what we call it as so we strategically we said that we will put such names to them so that they are into the into the local culture they the, because at that time telangana telangana was an say what you call aspiration so we said that let us put a name which catches up immediately so we started saying that telangana sona so here i want to add one thing actually agriculture is a way of life and it is intertwined into our culture that means even you take festivals like pongal like batkamma here like uh, posa baisakhi in the north india these are intertwined and that is how the agricultural practices have also been developed and they have been accepted by the farmers socially so this is this is a very important aspect so we thought that we'll put a name of telangana sona and other other variety also what we have put is the name of batkamma and the third one what we put as it is the name of kunaram the village from where the variety has come so these three popular varieties i in fact in my lifetime are this has happened only during the time of green revolution and now i have seen that these varieties without any effort of ours have spread to few lakh acres in few months in few months and they have already spread to abetting states now these varieties are uh, so popular in the maharashtra in orissa in tamil nadu in the, say karnataka in uh, andhra pradesh so we we get every year farmers from there and collect the seeds and they go. so 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 much popular it has come then one interesting uh, uh, say aspect has happened because of uh, my networking in other parts of the world people have sent me a mail whether you have any rice varieties with high protein content this was another so we were surprised so people are looking sir hello 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 we are able to hear you sir you can go ahead yeah i can go ahead. okay so the this was another uh, interesting thing that has happened so then what we said is we asked our scientists to map all the varieties what we have for their composition so then we landed up with varieties which are of high protein content even up to 20 plus normally 6 to 8% protein content will be there then this uh, variety in which where we found that glycemic index is low then we started dwelling into it and then we got it uh, certified then national institute of nutrition also has done work on this and then it has been published and that is how this variety has uh, become uh, so popular that uh, it has uh, it has uh, found the uh, acceptance of farmers in a very short period so basically this all this has been done i am telling you in a very because i don't want to take much time it is in a very structured way wherein there there was a lot of uh, uh, say what you call thinking uh, uh, say uh, policy advocacy and all that have been gone research policy into the into the university simultaneously we have done so many things such to say what you call as on today i will uh, try to uh, also uh, ch- share with you uh, one is uh, with regards to we have adopted a value chain approach that means all our research is in a value chain approach if you look at earlier situation there wasn't any connection between food and agriculture even today there is no, no connection between as janardan reddy gar is saying people are eating something they don't know what farmer is producing 
Okay, so there is no connection between food and the city dwellers do not know who is producing this rice, who is producing that rice or so on and so forth. So there is no connection between agriculture and food as on today or what we consume. That is one thing. So what we said is on in one fine morning, Honorable CM asked us, what is our, what is that we are eating? Then we went for mapping of 132 commodities in this state. And we found that, uh, say what you call, there are a lot of gaps. We are uh, surplus in terms of rice, but we are, uh, uh, say what you call, deficient in oil seeds. We are deficient in pulses. We are deficient in vegetables. We are surplus in fruits. So that was one, uh, uh, say what you call, uh, mapping we have done. Then subsequently, we have gone for mapping of all the 33 districts for their soil fertility status. Then we have gone for mapping of the whether uh, that is prevailing in all the districts. So like that, and then simultaneously, we have established infrastructure, uh, say what you call enable accredited labs. So because the lot of things have to go into it. So all these things have simultaneously happened. And uh, it, now as on today, in the last five years, I think we have released 23 varieties, 23 varieties. And out of these 23 varieties, nine varieties have been released in other states. They have been accepted by the country in other states, which were released by the Central Varietal Release Committee. And for, say what you call 15 varieties, we have released in our own uh, state, covering about five to six crops. So such a planning has gone into all the research, what we are doing, wherein, uh, say what you call, we thought that rice is an important crop. So we said that we will have a collaboration with International Rice Research Institute who have the complete germplasm of the world. Then we said that we have these deficiencies. Can you share the germplasm with us? So under International Germplasm Exchange Program, we got the material from there. Then we went to Vietnam Rice Research Institute wherein one of our own student is a director. So then we, we have had a collaboration with them. Then we have entered into an MOU with the University of Honohem wherein they are doing excellent research work in seed science and technology. So we, we it's like that all the universities, wherever, which has a relevance to our crops in our state, we had a collaboration and we started working in that direction. This is one thing. But in, down the lane, we noticed that since we are getting a, a very, uh, so what you call high yields and uh, so on and so forth. So we started looking at other aspects as well. So one is value addition, food processing. These are the aspects which we are looking at. Simultaneously, this is, this is one thing which has come to the notice of the ISB or uh, say other people. Now today we have millet brands, our own millet brand, which is Millet Plus, our own um, uh, oil brand, which is Karta Gold uh, safflower oil, which we produce it, an organic safflower oil. We produce our own organic pulses, propulse. We also have organic uh, eco-friendly based dyes for textiles, uh, say what you call colors, so so on and so forth. So all, all are happening simultaneously in this uh, university. And we have also recently uh, established an AG foundation, uh, say where in uh, under section eight, this one, they are also working on uh, in a value chain mode with the uh, say what you call major uh, objectives of building up of three pillars uh, for this AG hub are, say for example, research ecosystem through promotion of translational research is one, we, wherein we want to mainstream our PhD students into that. Then innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem wherein through promotion of startups, let me share with you, we have already, we are already working with the World Economic Forum and IT Department of Agriculture, wherein we have recently assessed about 87 startups, Agritex, and out of that, we have selected some 20 startups and then we uh, pushed them into the, say, what you call uh, farmers' fields. So, like that, rural innovation. So, all these things are happening at, uh, say, what you call, that is how we have built up. One is infrastructure, another is promoting innovation. Another one is translational research, mapping of the needs of the farmers, needs of the consumers. So all these things are uh, have been planned. So what you call in a very systematic way. Uh, of course, I should thank uh, the support I have received uh, from my entire teaching and non-teaching staff, students, 
and as well as the government support for the last uh, uh, since 2014 i am uh, being at the helm of affairs the support i received from the honorable uh, competent authority uh, honorable cm uh, farmer agriculture minister and present agriculture minister so if i have any problem i need not uh, rush and uh, seek their appointment or so on so forth i can straight away call them i have this problem kindly help us so on so forth so they are helping us. So there was an enabling environment for the university as well to uh, nurture in this type of innovation and ecosystem. That is how the things have started happening. And uh, today, I think uh, the university is placed at a very top position in the top five universities. And uh, any new initiative that is taken in education or research, it is first piloted in our university by the ICR, which is an apex body for uh, uh, agriculture. So these are the things that are happening. That is how we are nurturing the innovation and uh, uh, say ecosystem here, providing opportunities for our staff and uh, that is giving the results. So thank you, Dr. Praveen Rao for uh, excellent narration of how the uh, Telangana State Agricultural University is doing stellar job to come up with new varieties, not just rice, but other crops as well through uh, extensive collaborations and partnerships across the world. And obviously, this is central to the prosperity of the farmers who are the backbone of the country. So without further ado, I'd like to request uh, Mr. Ravikant Reddy to talk from a different angle. And he comes from a very unique background, which I will talk about in just a minute, of how is it that consumers are looking at rice varieties in general and the Telangana Sona in particular. Obviously, he would have talk to a lot of consumers who are uh, using this particular variety and they must be benchmarking with other available varieties. So Ravi Kantreti is an engineer by education and an entrepreneur by profession. He's the founder and administrator of the great Hyderabad Food and Travel Club. It's a club promoted by Face Group, Facebook and it has over 27,000 members. It's a platform those, for those who are passionate about food and travel. In 2018, it was selected by Facebook uh, as uh, the Hyderabad lead of Community Circles Leadership Program. And the year-long CLC program was a Facebook initiative. There were many groups from all over the world, out of which the group that he is heading was also one of them. And uh, then it was featured at Berlin uh, where there were 108 community leaders from across the world. He also mentors many other CLC uh, clubs in the city of Hyderabad, who are based, uh, which are sponsored by Facebook. So I think uh, amongst all of us, including the audience and us, he has a deep insight into the pulse of the consumer. And uh, so particularly while he may have a broad You're spectrum playing. understanding of consumers and their needs and desires and uh, likes and dislikes. Uh, if you can focus more on rice varieties, how do they choose? Particularly on Telangana Sona, what is their perception? Not just in Telangana, but maybe neighboring states. That would be of great value. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shashadri Garu. And uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for having me. Uh, it's very interesting to uh, understand uh, the background of how uh, Telangana Sona was developed. And... Uh, the history of it from uh, Jayadan Redigaru and then uh, Professor Pravin Raogadu. Uh, to be very honest, sir, uh, I come from a uh, farming background myself. My uh, parents are farmers and we are from Nirmal uh, district of Telangana. And since childhood, uh, I was brought up uh, listening to the varieties of rice. And the earliest is, as uh, uh, Pravin Raogadu mentioned, was Telahamsa and then Surekha, uh, the Dodubiyam, uh, as they call it. And then subsequently, uh, as uh, time passed by, the varieties that became more popular and BPT was the first one and then the Samba Masuri. Yes, uh, day before yesterday when I shared with uh, the community that I run on Facebook, the Great Hyderabad Food and Travel Club, that I would be participating in a webinar where Telangana Sona will be discussed. One of the first things that a member said is, do you mean Masuri? So, it's ingrained in the minds of uh, people. The moment you talk about fine rice, thin variety, fine rice, they call it as masuri. Uh, 
and uh, dr janardhan reddy you mentioned that you know even when he uh, took over as the secretary of agriculture in february uh, even for him the word telangana sona was new yes uh, we did come across the term telangana sona uh, but uh, i would say today as a consumer jira uh, ka sambhai softly more popular uh, so you have lot of uh, dishes or food being prepared uh, from basmati and jira ka samba as compared to the masuri so masur uh, variety uh, is mostly consumed at homes and telangana sona uh, i haven't personally tried it yet but from a user's perspective uh, what i get to hear or read in the paper that it has the very high protein and low glycemic index that sounds very very exciting in the sense that today when we talk about healthy eating especially this has come up a lot during the uh, lockdown period when people were you know more uh, confined to the homes and they were doing a lot of cooking a uh, lot of healthy eating habits were uh, coming up and people were talking about uh, shifting to you know when people talk about healthy eating the first thing when they talk about diet is why don't you remove rice from your diet or why don't you switch over to brown rice which is you know uh, much healthier Uh, the fact that telangana sona uh, has very high protein and low glycemic index is something that has to be propagated and promoted and uh, taste wise what i have read so far and heard says that it is as good as the best variety uh, that is available in the market whether it is samba masuri or bapatla masuri or karnul masuri or sona masuri uh, so telangana sona is promoted well i am sure will find many 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 takers for the simple reason that people want to eat healthy at the same time i personally wouldn't want to eat brown rice or unpolished rice if a polished rice polished variety is giving me the health benefits that a unpolished rice can give hmm very good uh if if uh am i audible sir Yes, yes. Yeah, please go yeah. ahead. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So if if uh, a uh, you know a polished rice can give me the benefits, health benefits as a consumer, uh, if it can uh, uh, give me you know uh, high protein and low glycemic index kind of uh, requirements that most of the people were looking for today, uh, because uh, brown rice and millet, these two things have picked up in past uh, few. months years among and have found acceptance among the consumers but there's a lot of people uh, for food eating for relishing the food eating brown rice is something that is not very easy i mean they do eat but then it is a compulsion so if we have a home grown brand home grown variety of rice uh, which is telangana sona if we the consumer comes to know of it by whatever means of advertisement or promotion that the government of telangana and the producers can do it will it will be a beautiful thing for us that we get to cook uh, you know tasty dishes using uh, a variety which is uh, healthy as well so so uh, thank you ravikant reddy garu for a nice exposition if i may summarize what has transpired so far the government as epitomized by janardhan reddy garu was basically saying that look this 155 day previous popular rice grown uh, straddles two cropping seasons and that's not good so there was a pressure to find a rice variety which is healthy but just where you can have two crops and then of course we heard pravin rawar who talk about the uh, extensive research that has gone in and as a fru- fruition of all that uh, janardhan reddy garu talked about how much of huge amount of acreage is being uh, cultivated with telangana sona and uh, what we heard from ravi kant essentially is that while this rice is good uh, from consumers point those who have used it there is a lot of lack of information that it even exists and this is a very big challenge so this is a classical marketing problem you have huge supply but then the consumers are not even aware of it and uh, also if i want to buy it i don't know where i can buy it even the retailers and distribution channels may not be tuned to say that we need to keep this rice because unless there is a pull from the consumers nobody is going to stock these things because the channel partners are all going to look at what's in it for me 
So this is where the uh, challenge of marketing comes in. And I would now request Madhu Vishwanathan, who has been uh, spearheading this uh, whole project from ISB. He's a professor in marketing and a deep understanding of different aspects of marketing. But he took to this project uh, very, very like a personal challenge and uh, mobilized a team of researchers and students to work on it. And a very nice report has been submitted to the government of Telangana. So uh, with this brief introduction, I'd request Madhu to talk about it, maybe in seven or eight minutes, so that we leave some time for Q&A after Manish, Professor Manish Gangwar's talk. Over to Madhu. Mute. Not yet. Madhu, not yet. Not audible. Uh, uh, now it's okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, DVR. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the Telangana government, Dr. Janal Reddy, for you know getting this project rolling. And of course, Dr. Praveen Rao from PJTSAU and, uh, and uh, his team, who were very helpful during the whole process. Uh, I would also like to thank the external relations uh, committee for from ISB who have done a splendid job of you know actually managing the whole process, uh, Sridhar and uh, Guru in particular. Uh, but thanks everyone. Uh, it was a uh, it was actually very exciting to work on this project and partly because it was a little personal. I always feel like we don't give enough credit to the food that we eat. Uh, we you know. We just take it for granted, but don't look into, you know, where, what we're eating, why we're eating it, where is it coming from? And so this felt like a project that would actually, you know, help me understand how our thinking goes. Now, as everybody uh, before me has said, one of the things is this is a great product. Okay. Objectively, it has a lot of good qualities to it. Uh, you know, it benefits the farmers in terms of, you know, crop rotation and the usage of water. Uh, it benefits the millers uh, in terms of polishing and you know from a consumer perspective it again has uh, you know high protein and low glycemic index which are again uh, you know desirable attributes but the problem is consumers always have a different view of things okay and that is where we come in okay consumers have their own perspective Again, we know that uh, i'm sure if i had a debate on you know which is the best biryani in india I'm sure none of will come, will come to an agreement on that. And so the objective of our study was to figure out, you know, how do consumers perceive rice in general? What are their touch points? And, uh, you know, how can we then use that information to come up with a marketing and a branding plan? And this is where, you know, we had that excellent team uh, of uh, students from ISB who were also working on this. And I was able to mentor them into you know, figuring out what we did is we conducted a lot of interviews with the different stakeholders uh, that included uh, the uh, the uh, the people from the university, uh, PJTSAU University, Dr. Janandan Reddy, and also from the Millers Association. And then we proceeded to interview consumers. And then we, you know, released, uh, we conducted a survey and then did marketing research analysis. Of that. Now, some of the key findings, and this echoes you know, what we've been hearing, right? So one is that Telangana Sona is, uh, the awareness for Telangana Sona is high in Telangana, but, you know, not a lot. Okay, in other states, the awareness is much lower. Uh, even, in even in Telangana, the awareness is much lower than the other rice varieties that, are, that exist. Okay. Now, that's good to know, but how do we, uh, you know, do better on that. So what we found out is in terms of influence, as far as consumers are concerned, there are two big sources of influence for consumers in this segment. One is the uh, Kirana store, uh, store owners. So basically the last mile distributors have a big say in what, what the consumers are purchasing. And then the second one is friends and family. So social influencers like Mr. Reddy and you know general friends would be great sources of information and influence on the type of rice that we consume. Okay, so consumers in themselves are not making these active choices. So that is one thing we found. Uh, the other thing we identified is that 
if you think about different segments of customers that are out there uh, we identify six different consumer segments all with different preferences for uh, for rice the largest segment in our data we call them health pioneers uh, they care most about health and less about taste okay uh, if you were to target those customers on these health aspects it would work well but besides these segment if you think about all the other segments that are out there they care about health and taste okay so if you want to do a mass campaign then the focus should not be just on health but also on the taste aspects because what you have found is taste is another factor that is uh, big in uh, you know rice consumption the other attributes are much less so if you are able to brand it or position the uh, product on both health and taste aspects of the uh, product then it would actually reach well among the consumers uh, the last part is we did find that there is a gap between uh, between millets and the sona masuri so there's actually a, a demand that exists between them and so positioning the brand between the millets and the masuri variety would actually help in uh, again in uh, raising awareness and purchase of the brand so that's essentially what we have found so far and we have recommended that the government work on these when they're designing their uh, awareness and marketing campaigns over to you divya thank you madhu for uh, uh, coverage in brief about the work done by isb to see how we can take this to the market now i request professor manish gangwar who is the associate dean for research is also uh, doyen in marketing and therefore uh, wearing both the hats could he comment on how these type of partnerships can help to solve big problems because he also has a good hang of technology things like artificial intelligence machine learning big data and so on and how good innovations from labs like telangana state uh, agricultural university uh, supported by government policy the way that janardan reddy garu talked about how they can be taken into mass markets just just not local in hyderabad or telangana but whole india and the world because it's finally boils down to a marketing question you can grow as much as you want but unless you market it it's not going to get traction and sooner or later even the farmers will lose interest so over to manish for about 5 minutes of uh, brief on uh, you know this encompassing question am i audible yes thank you divya uh, um and first of all i would like to thank uh, dr janardan reddy and uh, dr praveen rao for giving isb an opportunity to actually work on such an interesting problem um when uh, this uh, this these talks has started uh, we thought you know wow this uh, we have been doing lot of uh, marketing and and all different kind of uh, uh, studies and research which are lot of it is for the the commercial uh, customers right um, we talk about cars how to promote other things Uh, but these are the places where basically we found that actually there is a there is a very good opportunity for ISB to actually bring some change and and, and make some impact, right? And that's how uh, the Madhu and I and uh, uh, our students actually got involved in the project. So so thanks for thank you for giving us this opportunity and thank you uh, Guru and uh, Shridhar to actually managing the whole thing. Now coming to uh, Professor Devia's question. um yes i mean there is a lot of scope and as i'm not going to kind of you know go into the the details of it uh, where the technology actually can help uh, with these issues and particularly i want to mention one thing a lot of scientific research which is very valuable to the uh, uh, the larger society usually stays within the labs right and and i'm not talking about this particular case but there are lot and lots of you know a uh, new innovations and inventions which happen which do not see the light uh, of a day and the one of the prime reason is that uh, uh, the scientists usually are very passionate about creating better and better things but when it comes down to the the market side of it that's where the kind of you know things starts failing and in this case also if you look at uh, uh, professor rouse and 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 the 
PJT SIU University came up with a very brilliant product, right? And I'll just take the perspective as a marketer, a brilliant product, which actually uh, is really kind of doing things which uh, uh, society probably needs today. Uh, but the, the problem here is what uh, Ravi Kant was talking about, that consumers are not aware of that, right? And that's a very typical, typical problem where scientists have come up with the very, very nice idea, but, uh, but the market basically doesn't know. Scientists do not have resources to basically kind of go to the market and, 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 and understand from the consumer's point of view what kind of you know, awareness and how it should be created. So I think this was a very good opportunity for ISB, and there is a very good opportunity for ISB to kind of you know bring in their expertise in marketing to help the uh, farmers and the the government. I I think this is such a brilliant product, which not only if we if we actually do the right thing will be very successful in India, but more likely I'm looking at the potential that this product has a potential to be exported at the very, very, uh, in, the, in, in the Western countries, because in the Western world, uh, people can afford, their affordability is more, and they are more health conscious because, because of the affordability. Now they are more thinking about how to live healthy life and, and stuff like that. So that's where this is the very, very sweet spot. But here is the challenge. The challenge actually comes from, like what uh, Dr. Janardhan Reddy was talking about, the, there is a problem of scarcity when you don't have enough, and then very quickly it might turn into the, the problem of plenty, right? So I'm, I'm going to use this word, and let's not call it a problem of plenty, rather call it issues of uh, plenty. And that's where the economics comes into play, right? So you have to make a very delicate balance between how much the demand from the market is coming and how much you supply. If you oversupply, it will crash the prices because prices is where basically the supply and demand curve meet and, and that defines the prices. So you have to produce just enough to meet the demand. You can't ramp up the demand so fast unless you develop, uh, sorry, ramp up the supply so fast so to exceed the demand. If you ramp up the supply too fast, then it will exceed the demand and the, uh, the, the market prices might not be able to sustain. If the market prices are not sustainable, then basically the benefits which the farmers were looking for will not be right. And, and that's where it's very, very important. Let me emphasize again, it's very important in the very early stages of this particular product for, for government and, and with the help of uh, the Madhu and, and, and all, the, all the people and, and people like Ravi Kant and all, basically try to create a lot of awareness. There's a huge potential. So I'm going to stop here because there are a lot of interesting questions which are in the, in the, in the forum. So let's discuss uh, uh, those first. But that's, that's my, uh, my view that, that actually we need to be careful about matching the supply and demand carefully uh, so that the price uh, can be sustained. Thank you, Professor Manish. And I think uh, what this is leading to is the importance or primacy of partnering because the universities that are in technology and science like the agricultural university come up with brilliant innovations. The government has its own priorities on what it should do to enhance the livelihood of people, especially the farming community, which represents a huge uh, proportion of people in any state. And uh, then it is there that uh, management institutes, top management institutes like ISB can come in to see how to scale these ideas to across the state. So I think uh, this, uh, what I can, if I have to take one line, take away from this, the showcasing of this partnership was brilliant. And of course, there are many, many more problems. And even this Telangana Sona, how do we scale it up to much bigger platforms? So in uh, connection with that, there are multiple questions and I will take a few of them, uh, depending on the time, we will close by 7, uh, 6.45 sharp, as we had promised. Lakshmi Manchikalapudi. Uh, this is addressed to Dr. Janardhan Reddy. Uh, sir, could you unmute yourself? How does Telangana plan to handle the surplus scenario created if one or two more states also get surplus? We also talked about these rice varieties have been picked up by other neighboring states. Also, how does the state plan to sell the health benefits 
vis-a-vis -vis the assumed competition. Competition is coming from Amsa, which is the traditional variety, and also the Basmati and Sona, uh, Masuri, and so on. So if you can just throw a brief light on this, this will help, sir. So only one particular point I want to mention is uh, the fittest will survive. Uh, out of the rice requirement of around 60 lakh tons in Telangana, so what we have uh, in Telangana in Telangana is only 20 lakh uh, metric tons of Telangana sana. So overall rice surplus is there, but I don't say, can't say, it is not true. Also, the Telangana sana is surplus. So out of our total rice requirement of 60 lakh metric tons, if we are producing only I think there's a signal problem. So if I may just move on till he joins uh, back. What he, oh, yes, sir. Mm. I think so, we lost you I, for the last 30 seconds. Yeah. So I'm okay. I think uh, I told about uh, the uh, Telangana solar is not surplus. Uh, it is just one third of the rice that is required in Telangana is produced here. It can cater to the needs of uh, still two third modes. Uh, more and also the other states and other countries it has export potential that's what i was trying to tell about telangana so now it is not very nice. the rice is yeah okay i think uh, there's a very valuable point this fittest will survive so consumers if it is properly marketed the consumers will figure out which is best for their health taste and so on uh, and the farmers will figure out what is best for them in terms of cropping patterns to get two crops a year and of course the millers and the retailers will also uh, essentially all in line. This, this is more by way of an observation, Ramesh Reddy. Uh, I'm a farmer and engineer by profession while trying to market rice. The main issue for farmer is to wait for six months to sell, which cannot be afforded by farmers to store. As consumers wanted minimum six mon months old rice, they don't like to take fresh rice from the field. I tried to sell through Facebook group managed by Ravi Kant but got the feedback that from many users that it should be at least one year old. So thank you for that feedback. It's more a comment. So I'll move on. There is Mithilesh uh, who has got a question. What is the plan of action from agricultural university or government or ISB to position Telangana amongst the public today? Uh, there seems to be no awareness among the masses about the existence of Telangana Sona, a variant of low glycemic index rice. What activities have been taken to engage with farmers for long run to continue growing Telangana? So the first question of how do you position, I'll pose it to Madhu. Uh, I'll just repeat the highlights of that question. There seem to be no awareness among the masses about the existence of Telangana Sona, which is a great from a health perspective, low GI. What's the plan of positioning it amongst the public? And after that, I'll shift to uh, how to engage with the farmers. I'll request Dr. Janard then ready to comment on. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Divya. So uh, before I answer the question, I want to highlight one thing that, you know, it, this is actually unprecedented that there is a government push to promote a particular rice variety. Okay. And I think we should, we should always keep that in mind. This is not the norm with which we sell our agricultural products. Okay. Now, with that uh, in mind, uh, let, so the positioning, what we have found, like I said, uh, there are two key aspects uh, that the brand can be positioned on, which would be health and taste varieties. Okay. Now, as far as how to go about positioning it, uh, we'll have to target awareness campaigns through influencers. So that can be both through TV influencers and digital influencers. And the next key part, which is who are also one of the primary influencers for rice consumption, is to target Kirana store owners and the last mile distribution centers, rice mandis, and you know, promote the rice variety among them to you know create this awareness among consumers. Uh, and again, the dimensions of awareness will be on two aspects, which would be both healthy and tasty. Okay? Now, as far as uh, the uh, there was another question also on uh, uh, you know promoting in non-diabetic segments 
again, this again is about showing value to them, right? So one key aspect is even the non-diabetic segment is not averse to health as such, okay? But to them, there are other criterion which are more important. Uh, which is taste. And what comes up in our uh, studies is that Telangana Sona is actually not bad on the taste front. As in it, it compares with other rice varieties over there. Okay, And so promoting the brand on both these aspects is basically saying, okay, here's the value add. We are tasty and we are healthy. Okay, And that's essentially what the uh, campaigns would look like. Excellent. So if I may take a page out of what Madhu is saying, basically the government has to step in with a high, high decibel uh, com- communication campaign, you know, saying that go for this, whether you're diabetic or not, anybody, you know, it's a great rice to try and then to stabilize on it because it has a huge amount of advantages. I don't see that uh, perhaps the government has to take an initiative in rolling out such a campaign and others, private players can then join in if they see value in it. The next question is what activities are being taken to engage farmers for long run to continue growing Telangana soap? So now this is by Mithilesh Boina. Uh, Dr. Reddy, Janardhan Reddy, could you please reflect on this question? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, that's what this is the first step this time, as you have noticed, and the participants are also noticed. And a lot of uh, publicity has also been given when we just entered uh, an MOU with uh, ISB. So that itself shows the in keen interest and intention of the government to help the farmers, number one. It is, uh, it is a win-win-win-win for all. In fact, uh, it's good for farmers because it is competing with the long uh, uh, duration crops like BPT, Soma, Samba, Masuri. And it is also able to withstand to because Samba Masuri has become generally after 10 years, it has to be discarded. But more than 20 years also, in spite of facing a lot of problems, it has not been discarded because of its taste, I suppose. And uh, Samba Masuri and the farmers are liking in terms of its uh, short duration uh, crop, number one. And also because of its productivity and because of its saleability. Only it will add some more uh, value to what they are all doing. And this time, and in fact, consciously, government also said that uh, anyhow, if you are going for finer varieties, so uh, the more it has to be consumed and internally and uh, within the country, domestically and outside also. Uh, in fact, uh, Visavi last year, with one call given by the government, its uh, cultivation almost has doubled. Of course, total cultivation, cultivable area for uh, paddy also is increased from 40 lakh acres uh, last year to around 54 lakh acres this year. So the Telangana Sonos cultivation, number one, cultivating first time in the country, a government is able to capture what variety of uh, even paddy, among the paddy, around more than 100 varieties are there, but prominent are 10 to 12. But out of them, what variety is grown was never quantified in the past. With a call given last year and this year, we are maintaining this type of statistics, farmer-wise, village-wise, survey number-wise, and uh, then district-wise in the state. So that's why I'm able to tell all these statistics. It is, they are not uh, approximate uh, statistics, and it is, they are exact statistics. So what has happened at the field level, we are able to do it. So I think farmers uh, will like it. Um, from farmers' point of view, only it has to be sold, and it has to be consumed. For the self-consumption is number one. 5% or 10% of whatever it produces. And second, if market's uh, ability to consume this particular variety, also there is a need because ICAR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research and all agriculture universities also strive to tell the people either to go for crop rotation number one and also to change the variety after every 10 years. So there is a need for two reasons. One, BPT, which is uh, comparable with it in some uh, characteristics, has to be replaced which has been very popular, but it is so popular that it is over popular. And uh, now no longer uh, it is able to withstand uh, the vicissitudes in the market because uh, it is uh, not able to withstand the pests and diseases, etc. So that is one uh, particular reason. And all the good qualities of all the fine varieties have been brought into this. And uh, then uh, it is also graded as uh, grade A and uh, then Food Corporation of India. And uh, then civil supplies also they are procuring with 1888 rupees minimum. So that is also not a problem. So I think in the interest of the society, number one, consumers, and also in the interest of the farmers, 
and if we continue our journey and if you give the insights having started isb i think by and large it must be in the business uh, trade center say sector or service sector or industry sector but um, i suppose it is for the first time so my tuffy is disturbing me sorry so because i came from out outside <laughs> so uh, uh, the your journey with isb would be very very fruitful i i suppose and uh, by the time the project report is submitted uh, regarding the branding of uh, this particular variety its assignment should not be over i request the isb uh, i request isb to travel along with us for quite uh, some more time on this particular issue also and many other uh, crops because much of the economy may not be in terms of gsdp or dgdp it may not be so relevant for india because the agriculture purely and allied sector primary sector contributes not more than 16 to 18% and pure agriculture if you take only 6% but the oh. sheer number of people that are dependent on agriculture if you see that is 10 times more 60% or so so since so many people are dependent on this so we have quite lot of uh, main items uh, which uh, uh, we will take up and uh, for marketing etc for value addition whenever you have more food and uh, for maize i am told more than 12000 products are available similarly for rice uh, many more products would have to come and where value addition will be done we'll uh, continue this journey with isb thank you sir uh, there are a few comments that i'd like to read for all of us to reflect they're very valuable first is mary reka farmer shared another fascinating aspect about sona telangana sona that the straw palatability and milk yield is good so what she is saying is not only for humans but also for cattle the straw is uh, very uh, tasty so that's something which is uh, for from a large scale adapting adapting it will be a very good thing uh, adoption sorry a farmer takes even animals preference into account while making variety choice so when he is growing it uh, i think he looks at it what what do my cattle like so this is uh, something which is a valuable benefit i think some of the other questions have emb- been embedded in the answers uh, that uh, madhu and uh, dr Uh, our secretary has uh, janardan reddy garu have talked how is the team trying to get public attention to market telangana sona i think i'll summarize this by saying that basically the journey has just begun and uh, there is a long way to go because you are creating a disruptive innovation in the market so to speak and these things will have a huge of course marketing and strategy literature is full of how these innovations get uh, mainstreamed and uh, that is where uh, people like professor manish and madhu can continue to help and the invitation from dr janardan reddy is uh, you know very nice that it cannot be just a six month intervention but a hand holding along along the way uh, we luckily in place like isp we have batch after batch of students so a faculty who is interested in it can keep hand holding by bringing in new perspectives by various students the next question is do you have any plans to market telangana sona produced for this season maybe this i'll request uh, dr janardan reddy to talk about and then i'll just close with uh, two questions which i think have maybe he can also talk about the next one how do we promote non diabetic segment uh, that is to promote this rice in non diabetic segment because they also need to see value if it is just said as a diabetic the risk is in a home there will be two types of rice cooked telangana sona for the diabetic and uh, some other rice for the uh, non diabetic and this will be a terrible situation because we really want mass markets and volumes so sir if you can reflect on these two do you have plans for telangana sona produced this season and then how do you promote to non diabetic segment i think to a, some extent madhu has already touched upon it but to be fair to these two uh, questioners one is ramesh reddy and dean agriculture we'd like to hear from you and a related question who will be running these campaigns because uh, we are beginning at least it has to be somebody like the government so what are the plans there dr janardan reddy yeah 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 okay so i think in the beginning also this question was there it is not fully answered yet but every home as father and mother and grandfather and grandmother and also the children 
when we uh, advertise it uh, we should be very careful that uh, it can also be it is also good for diabetic that does not mean that for non diabetics it is prescribed it is kept, it is a prescription it has other uh, finer elements and advantages too so therefore uh, because it is so different from other fine varieties so we have to highlight uh, highlight its uh, distinct quality uh, and uh, then you only have to suggest uh, like uh, it has the other distinct quality that does not mean that it suffer it suffers uh, from uh, uh, other uh, qualities like other fine varieties uh, are enjoying very good thank you the very last comment is i think related to what uh, dr janardhan reddy said we can do all the campaigns on earth but if the supply is not there and the channels don't stock it like retailer distributor and so on then you will have a much more serious problem on the one side farmers are growing large quantities then the campaign says this is a great rice go and buy it but then when they go to the shop the retailer is not even aware of it or he says stock nahi hai sahab so that will be a very dangerous situation that can actually uh, kill the whole in, uh, market launch so i think uh, the availability is a very big question that uh, the government has to apply its mind on and educate the retailers apart from the farmers and the entire distribution channels so on this note i think we can bring this to a close thanking all the panelists dr janardhan reddy dr praveen rao mr ravi kant reddy professor madhu vishwanathan professor manish gangwar and of course uh, kumara guru and sridhar who have been eternal source of support dr uh, so colleagues at uh, cbm damodar and uh, asta and of course Not the in, most in, important is uh, the participants uh, about 150 of them uh, who were uh, you know in rapt attention to the proceedings of this uh, whole panel discussion so on these uh, words i'd like to bring this to a formal close thanking one and all and of course the isb av team which has set up a rather flawless uh, you know way of us communicating despite the distances and so on so it was a very brilliant hand holding uh, thank you one and all and uh, we look forward to a super success of uh, the telangana sona thank you thank you professor thank, thank you sheshadri garu thank you thank you manish thank you thank, thank you everyone thank you all thank, thank you, you all bye bye and ready thank you pravin yes yeah. thank you ravikant garu thank you thanks sir thank you very much Thank you Madhu as well for excellent work thank you thanks